What's up everyone? Today, we are building your toolkit. I'm going to show you the essential tools every web hacker needs in their belt. You cannot touch a website without these. Master these now, because we are setting the stage for something big, a deep dive into the top 10 website vulnerabilities coming up next. Do me a favor, help me hack the algorithm. Drop a like, hit subscribe, and let's get started. First up, we have the king of web hacking, Burp Suite. If you are testing web apps, this is all you need. Basically, Burp acts as a proxy. It sits right in the middle between your browser and the website you are attacking. Why is this cool? Because it lets you pause time. You can intercept a request, like a login attempt, freeze it, change the data, and then send it to the server. The free version comes with the essentials you need to master. First, the proxy. This lets you see the raw data, cookies, and hidden headers. Imagine you click Login. The proxy catches that request before it leaves your computer. You can see exactly what your browser is sending, maybe a hidden cookie or a weird parameter you didn't notice. Second, the crawler. This automatically maps out every page on the site so you don't miss anything. It finds hidden directories, admin panels, and forgotten files that aren't linked on the home page. And third, the repeater. This is where you'll live. It lets you grab a request and modify it over and over again. For example, if you see a login field sending a username, you can change it to OR1 equals 1 to test for SQL injection, fire it off, and see if the server breaks. You can do this 100 times a minute until you find the crack. It takes a minute to learn, but trust me, if you want to hack websites, mastering Burp Suite is non-negotiable. Now, if you're on a budget or you just love open source software, your new best, best friend, friend is OWASP Zap, Zap, the Z attack, Z attack proxy. proxy. It does almost everything Burp does, intercepting traffic, crawling sites, but the difference is that it's completely free and community driven. The coolest feature you need to know about is the HUD or heads up display. It literally overlays testing tools right onto your browser window while you surf. It feels like you're hacking inside a video game interface. Here is a real world example of how you'd use it. Let's say you're testing a blog. You fire up Zap Spider to crawl every page and map out the site structure. Then you run the active scanner. It might find a comment form that is vulnerable to cross-site scripting and alert you immediately before you even type a single script manually. It also has a massive plugin ecosystem for things like API testing. It might lack some of Burp's fancy enterprise automation, but for a free tool, it is an absolute beast. Once we have our proxy set up, we need to map the territory. This is where Nmap comes in. I know I mention this tool every time in my video. Sorry, I like Nmap. However, Nmap shifts our focus from the application down to the network layer. We need to know what ports are open and what services are actually running. For example, running Nmap SV against a target is like doing a background check. It tells you the service version. Is that server running Apache on port 80? Is it running an old, vulnerable MySQL database on port 3306? You can't hack the app if you don't know what it's running on. It also has a powerful scripting engine. You can run scripts like HTTP enum to automatically hunt for exposed admin panels or hidden directories. But a word of warning, aggressive Nmap scans are loud. They will trigger security alerts on a live system, so use it carefully. And by the way, if you want a true deep dive into Nmap or Burp Suite, I have dedicated videos on both of those covering every single command. Check the links in the description after this video. When it comes to breaking into databases, SQL Map is the absolute king. This is a specialized tool designed to automate SQL injection attacks. If you find a URL that looks vulnerable, something like example.com slash product.php question mark ID equals one, you don't have to manually guess the database structure. You feed that URL to SQL Map and it goes to work. For example, running a command like SQL Map dash U your URL dash dash DBS will attempt to inject code and list out every single database on the server. From there, you can dump tables, extract passwords, and even take over the underlying file system. It also has advanced features to bypass weak web application firewalls. It's a massive time saver, but you have to be careful. 
If you aren't configuring it correctly, you can overwhelm the target server and crash the database you're trying to hack. Next, we have Nikto. This is a dedicated scanner focused entirely on the web server itself. It checks for misconfigurations and known vulnerabilities. It scans for things like outdated software versions, dangerous files left on the server, like phpinfo.php, or missing security headers that leave the site exposed. Running a command like nikto-hexample.com will generate a report of potential flaws, such as directory traversal or default admin pages that were never disabled. But here's the reality check. Nikto is noisy. It generates thousands of requests. It is unsuitable for stealthy recon because any decent firewall will block you immediately. But for a quick assessment in a lab or with client permission, it's excellent. Just remember to pair it with manual verification because it can produce false positives. For instance, Nikto might flag a server as vulnerable to a specific CVE, but you need to confirm that with a targeted exploit before you put it in your report. Then we have the heavy artillery, Metasploit. This is a massive penetration testing framework that goes way beyond just web applications. It offers modules for exploiting vulnerabilities across entire systems. For web testing, Metasploit includes exploits for common flaws like file inclusion or CMS vulnerabilities. But for recon, we care about its auxiliary modules. These are scanners that aid reconnaissance. For example, you might use the module auxiliary slash scanner slash HTTP slash DIR underscore scanner to find hidden directories on a server. Once you find a vulnerability, you could exploit a WordPress plugin flaw to gain a shell. Metasploit's command line interface, MSF console, and its database integration make it powerful but complex. Here is how you set it up like a pro. First, install it on Kali using apt install Metasploit framework. Then, initialize the database with msfdb in it. This is critical because it lets you save your findings. Once you are in, use workspace a example underscore com to create a workspace for your project so you don't mix up clients. And always run msf update to make sure you have the latest exploits. Set your global options like our hosts for the target IP so you aren't retyping it every time. In a lab, practice with Metasploitable, a vulnerable VM designed specifically for this, by running an exploit like exploit slash multi slash http slash php underscore cgi underscore arg underscore injection to gain a shell. And don't forget to save your output with spooloutput.txt for your report. Finally, we need X-ray vision, that is Wireshark. This is a network protocol analyzer that captures and inspects traffic at the packet level. While it's not exclusive to web testing, it's incredibly useful for analyzing unencrypted HTTP traffic or debugging TLS issues. For instance, if a web application uses weak encryption, Wireshark can reveal sensitive data in transit, like passwords sent over HTTP, right in the packet bytes. In a lab, you capture traffic between your Kali VM and a target to study request patterns. Wireshark's filtering capabilities, like HTTP.request, let you focus on web traffic, but it requires understanding protocols like TCP and HTTP to use effectively. Wireshark setup involves selecting the right network interface, which is usually ETH0 for your lab network. Optimize your workflow by applying capture filters like TCP port 80 to focus on HTTP traffic and drastically reduce noise. For analysis, use display filters like HTTP.request to isolate the specific web requests you care about. In a lab, capture traffic between your Kali VM and a target VM running DVWA, then analyze requests for unencrypted data. Save captures in PCAP format for later review and use Wireshark's follow TCP stream feature to reconstruct HTTP conversations. This lets you read the data easily. Also, configure Wireshark to resolve host names for clearer reports, but disable it for stealthy operations so you don't trigger DNS lookups. Before we wrap up, here are some general optimization tips that apply across all these tools. First, allocate sufficient resources. Kali VMs need at least 4 GB of RAM and 20 GB of disk space. Tools like Burp and Zap are hungry, so don't starve them. Update your tools regularly by running apt update and apt upgrade on Kali to fix bugs and add features. Use virtual environments or Docker containers to isolate tools, preventing dependency conflicts. Document your configurations in a lab notebook like Cherry Tree 
noting settings for each tool and target. If you don't document it, it didn't happen. And finally, always test configurations in a safe environment, like a VM running Juice Shop, before applying them to live systems. All right, leveling up. While tools like Burp Suite are awesome, every pro hacker eventually builds a custom toolkit. Think of this like modding a video game or tuning a car. You take the standard stuff and you tweak it to fit exactly how you like to work. This is the moment you stop being a beginner and start becoming a pro. The foundation is usually your Kali Linux machine, but the default tools aren't enough. You need to add special gear. For example, Burp is great for websites, but what about the cloud? You might download tools like Cloudsploit to scan AWS servers or Kite Runner to find hidden API doors that normal scanners miss. Now here is your superpower, scripting. You need to learn a little bit of Python. Why? Because Python lets you build your own mini tools. Imagine you have a scan that gives you 1,000 results. You don't want to read them one by one. You write a simple Python script to sort through the mess and find the passwords for you. It's like building a robot to do your homework. Then you have bash scripts. These are incredible. A bash script lets you chain tools together. Imagine typing one command and your computer automatically runs a port scan, saves the results, and then starts looking for vulnerabilities on those ports while you go grab a coffee. That is efficiency. You also need to stay organized. If your desktop looks like a bomb went off, you will lose data. Create a clean folder system, one folder for tools, one for scripts, and one for reports. And use a note-taking app like Cherry Tree or Obsidian. If you hack something cool but forget how you did it, it doesn't count. You need to take notes like a scientist. Finally, the ultimate level is automation. Tools like Ansible act like a conductor for an orchestra. They can set up your entire hacking lab and run complex attacks automatically. By building this toolkit, you are doing something important. You are stopping to just use tools and you are starting to create them. That is the difference between a script kitty and a real hacker. So there it is. That is your battle station. We covered the interceptors like Burp and Zap, the mappers like Nmap, the breakers like SQL Map, and the analyzers like Wireshark. But remember, these aren't magic bullets. A tool can find a bug, but only a human can understand the business logic impact. Don't just run a scan and hand over a report. Use these tools to probe, to learn, and to break things the smart way. I've dropped a list of all these tools in the description. Download them, fire up a lab like DVWA, and start practicing. If you found this breakdown helpful, smash that like button so the algorithm knows we exist. And let me know in the comments, are you Team Burp or Team Zap? I want to know what you're running. Thanks for watching. One life, one shot make it count.